The years old debate is, is it Office 365 or is it Microsoft 365? Or rather, let's just answer it right now. Office 365 is not Microsoft 365. In this video, I'm going to spell out how this confusion started, why it continues, what the differences are, and why we need to start calling these products by their correct name. So, how did this start? Where exactly did all this confusion begin? Back in March of 2020, we have this blog post. In this first article, they spell out the Microsoft 365 offerings for small and medium-sized businesses. As you scroll down here, it talks about these new names. It talks about, as of April 21, 2020, Office 365 Business Essentials is going to become Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Uh, it also talks about how you're going to get Business Premium going to Business Standard, Business to Business Premium, and then the Office 365 apps, the desktop apps, are going to Office 365 Pro Plus, is Microsoft 365 apps. If you go down, it does talk about that certain names aren't changing. Well, they changed the small business plans. They changed Microsoft 365 or Office 365 Business to Microsoft 365 Business. It says Office 365 E1 through E5 are staying the same. F1, A1, A3. All of these other names aren't going to be changing. Somehow in all of this, the messaging was missed. And I'll be honest, when I first saw these announcements, I missed it too. It sounded like all of Office 365 was going to be rebranded as Microsoft 365. Office 365 renamed to Microsoft 365. These name changes are announced. What's new is Teams for business users, some AI-powered stuff. But the gist of it is, Office 365 was completely rebranded as Microsoft 365. If we continue on and we go over to Wikipedia, we have Microsoft 365, formerly Office 365 as a subscription. So somehow, as this has gone along, you ended up with this massive misunderstanding that Office 365 was renamed to Microsoft 365. This is how this originally all started back in 2020. Through all of this, it really was only the small business plans themselves that were renamed as a part of this branding. Uh, there wasn't anything else when it came to enterprise. And that very key point, but very big deal, was missed as you go through all of this. And it continues today. These are articles from just yesterday when we went through Microsoft Ignite 2022. And this is from 9to5Mac, where Microsoft Office is the best-known best branch. They're almost entirely ditching it in favor of Microsoft 365. Microsoft began its rebranding ex exercise back in 2020 when it changed the name of its subscription plans from Office 365 to Microsoft 365. That differentiation over the last two years has been completely lost and continues today. The Verge had another article. The Microsoft Office collection of apps aren't going away. The first big brand change in 30 years sees Microsoft 365 take the center stage. And this one, again, just like 9 to 5 Mac, goes through how renaming Office 365 subscriptions to Microsoft 365 subscriptions two years ago. And now this change is going even deeper. When in reality, they only really renamed two or three of the plethora of plans that they have out there. Unfortunately, as you listen to Microsoft themselves talk, they almost always refer to Microsoft 365. You rarely hear Office 365. If you go look for Office 365, even a lot of the documentation itself refers to Microsoft 365. And the Office 365 is a little bit more buried. It's a little bit more blurred. When you go dig through documentation, the Office 365 documentation itself, if you go look at the URL, is under Microsoft 365. 
that in and of itself isn't necessarily entirely inaccurate. And that's what we're going to look at as we go through this. Even today, I continue to talk to people that are really confused. Um, they will come up to me and they'll say, I have Office 365, I want to do this and this. When I talk to them, do you really have Office 365 or do you really have Microsoft 365? Which one of those two products do you have? Because when it comes to everything except small business, they are very different from each other. You need to make that distinction when it comes to enterprise versus business. The business plans, we already talked about it. Office 365 within the business plans no longer exists. If you go over and take a look at these business plans, you have Microsoft 365 Business Basic, Microsoft 365 Business Standard, and Microsoft 365 Business Premium. There is no Office 365. You also have the Microsoft 365 apps for business. This is the subscription version of those desktop apps. That was changed. Back in 2020, all the business plans were changed. However, now let's go start looking at enterprise. There was one change when it came to enterprise. Office 365 Pro Plus was renamed to Microsoft 365 Apps for Enterprise. This are the desktop apps. Everything else stayed the same. Office 365 is not the same product as Microsoft 365. I myself have fallen into this habit of interchanging the two. We all need to do better at this. So what is Microsoft 365? Office 365 is its own product. If we go over to the product pages to go in and buy Office 365 for Enterprise, you will see this is, it does say Microsoft 365 Enterprise Compare Office 365 Plans. If we jump over to the Enterprise Plans, you will see over here on the left, we have Office 365 for Enterprise. Office 365 for Enterprise has three plans. Office 365 E1, E3, and E5. And then that one plan that was renamed your Microsoft 365 Apps for Business. Office 365, when it comes to the product, is potentially your Office apps, your desktop applications, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote. Uh, you can see E1 doesn't include those, your E3 and your E5 do. It includes your emailing and your calendaring, Exchange Online, uh, some of the things built on top of it, Bookings, Delve. It includes some meetings and voice, depending on those. It includes your social internet, your SharePoint, your Yammer, some of the new Viva products. Files, again, these are stored in OneDrive, in SharePoint, and some of the Power Apps, the Power Automate plans. This is going to be primarily your desktop management. So well, we're gonna actually start drawing this out. Over here, we have our Office 365. This is E1, you have your E3s, and you have your E5s among others. If you go down, you could get a little confused. It talks about some device and app management, some identity and access management, even some threat protection, information protection, advanced compliance. But your Office 365 plan is primarily your collaboration apps with just a few of those management type functionality services built into it. From here, there's another set of products that we have within this suite of cloud productivity products offered from Microsoft. And this is your enterprise mobility and security suite. This has pricing, and you'll also see this one has an E3 plan and an E5 plan. But what this does is start layering additional functionality on top of Office 365. And pay attention, we're going to be very distinct here. This is laying stuff on top of Office 365. Your identity and access management, that theme or that category we just looked at. You have a lot more things in EMS. Conditional access, multi-factor authentication, privileged identity management. Uh, you start getting into your endpoint management, which as of yesterday is now all going to start getting wrapped up under the Intune label. Where you have your mobile application management, PC management, data protection, information protection, 
goes out further with some document tracking, persistent data, and then some identity-driven security around Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So you'll start to detect the theme here where enterprise mobility and security is dealing a lot more with securing your environment, uh, the security settings that you may have in Azure Active Directory, protecting data, focused on security and managing your devices. And this product includes some of the other things like Microsoft Defender and Azure Active Directory Premium. Over here, going back to our whiteboard, up here, we have our EMS plans. This only has an E3 and an E5, but each one of these you can purchase separately. There's some dollar values. We're going to look at E3 and E5. This is 23.38. This was 10 and 17 when it comes to some of that pricing, because this is going to be important as we continue moving on. We still haven't gotten to Microsoft 365. We're still just talking about Office 365. So hold on, we're getting there. We will get to Microsoft 365, I promise. But before that, we need to talk about Windows Enterprise. Windows Enterprise, and again, this is not to be confused with Windows 365 because naming, titling can be a little bit hard. Windows 365 is the cloud PC something completely different. Maybe we'll get to a video on that. Windows Enterprise comes in two flavors as well. Windows Enterprise E3 and Windows Enterprise E5, just like EMS and Office 365. This is going to be your Windows licensing, but it doesn't include just Windows licensing. You'll also see it includes some of the things like Microsoft Defender for Endpoint that are bundled in here. Universal Print is in here, some device and app management. Tying this in to some of the EMS when we started talking about Microsoft Defender and Enterprise Mobility and Security. So this pricing, unfortunately, they don't put it out here when it comes to enterprise. For the purpose of this discussion, we're not actually gonna need it, but we are gonna go draw ourselves another bubble here and put Windows Enterprise, and this is gonna be E3 and E5 once again. And there's some dollar values associated with that one. That's Windows. We have now talked about three different products in the Microsoft Cloud Productivity Suite. Windows Enterprise, EMS, and Office 365. Three very different products. What then is Microsoft 365? If we jump over to our Microsoft 365 plans, you're going to see three of these plans here, E3, E5, and F3. F3 gets into the frontline workers. We're gonna talk about E3 and E5. From these bubbles that we'll be, we've drawn, what Microsoft 365 is, is an all-encompassing bubble of all of those. This is Microsoft 365. It is all of these features bundled into a single plan. So when you talk about an E3 plan, it is Office 365 E3, EMS E3, and Windows Enterprise E3. When you start talking about an E5 plan, it is Office 365 E5, EMS E5, in Windows Enterprise E5. Microsoft 365 is all of these combined together. And the cool thing about this is we wrote those dollar values on there for a reason. E3 plans for Office 365 and EMS are $23 and $10 respectively. If you add those two together, your E3 plan that is $36 here adding those together actually comes up with $33. So you have a difference of $3. You're essentially paying $3 a month, do the math, $36 a year for a Windows Enterprise license because that is now bundled into Microsoft 365. And not only is it just Windows, but it comes with Defender, Universal Print, some of those other things that are also licensed independently. E5 on the other hand is 38 and 17. So if you start talking about E5, 38 and 17, $55 compared to 57 here. E5, you're only paying two extra dollars a month for your Windows licensing. 
$24 a year for Windows Enterprise E5 with Defender for Endpoint, with your universal print, with those other aspects built into it. So this is why when people talk about Office 365 and Microsoft 365 interchangeably, it can cause a lot of problems. There are a whole bunch of features over here in EMS, in Windows Enterprise, that are excluded from Office 365. If you go tell me that you have Microsoft 365, it was all rebranded. Office 365 is now Microsoft 365. I have Microsoft 365 and I want to go do all this. I will go into that planning on having all of those features that are in EMS in Windows Enterprise. I go log in, we log in to admin.microsoft.com, go take a look, and all of a sudden we only have the features in Office 365. We're missing an entire suite of products when it comes to both securing your environment as well as Windows licensing, conditional access. This is that big distinction, is that difference between having enterprise mobility and security in Windows and not when you come to Office 365 and Microsoft 365. So it is a huge difference. And if you aren't 100% sure what license you have, as you go through documentation, look at features, Listen to announcements from Ignite that just came up. You may or may not be able to get certain features based on if you have Office 365 and Microsoft 365. These two terms are definitely not interchangeable when it comes to talking about what you have. And hopefully, as you talk about it and Microsoft talks about it and other people talk about it, you'll start making it clear which license you have and using the right terms. And Microsoft 365 does not equal Office 365. If you do have any questions, you want to talk through licensing features, you're always free. Reach out, book a meeting with me, call me. There's a link down to my website, contact me form down in the description. I will place all of these links to looking at Office 365 product maps, all of those down in the description as well. And we'll catch you in the next video.